There's a chant we often recite about the forms of respect that bring you into the presence of Nibbana. One of them is respect for the training. The training is very basic. Virtue, concentration, discernment. And in some cases it's so basic that we tend to overlook it. We want to go to the higher dharma, things that are more abstract, that seem to be more in line with our level of intelligence. And as a result, we tend to miss a lot of the really good lessons that can be learned from paying attention to the basics, giving them a lot of respect. Like the precepts. There are a lot of people who don't like rules and feel that rules make you a very small-minded person. You're going to abide by the rules and try to get a good mark on your rules and think that you get by that way. And that's a very immature attitude toward the rules. Both of those attitudes are mature, i.e. seeing that all you have to do is abide by the rules and you'll be able to get by. And the other attitude is seeing that that's all there is to the rules. There's a lot more. One is the willingness to take on the rules so that you don't just automatically assume that whatever you think is right is right. You're here to learn a lesson. You're here to learn things that you didn't know before. And many times it's a little rule that'll trip you up, It'll suddenly make you notice things that you used to take for granted, you can't take for granted. Or areas where you thought every reasonable person would see an exception. What's life like if you don't take that exception? As the Buddha said, that once a person has gained awakening, that person wouldn't break any of the basic rules or the precepts. As for the more minor rules, they may break them. They were talking about the rules for the monks. They may break them, but they realize that breaking them is something that you have to confess. In other words, even our hands show respect for the rules. So it's good to learn about the rules, and it's good to take them seriously. They force you to examine your actions carefully, and it's when you learn how to examine your actions carefully and begin to see that there's something not quite right about what you're doing, then you're learning. You don't see the rules as being beneath you. And in cases where you might see that there are exceptions, Take seriously the fact, okay, if you live by this rule consistently, as the Buddha says, you're giving unlimited safety to all beings, and that's how you gain unlimited safety yourself. And the quality of being meticulous about the rules then carries over into your concentration. Any little distraction, you say, nope, not going to go there. Nope, not going to go there. You really keep with it. Now, for this level of being meticulous to last, you have to base it on a sense of comfort and be willing to put some time in to develop that. Because it's only by sitting here for a long period of time that you can see things that are very subtle. If you're in too much of a hurry to go on to insight. You'll gain some insights, but they won't go very deep. And for most of the part, they'll be the kind of insights you expect. The whole point of the training is to teach yourself things you didn't expect, or to learn things you didn't expect, to be open to things you didn't expect. Because after all, if it was just in line with what you already expected, what's there to learn? Why do you need a training? You go off on your own and everything would be smooth. So the attitude we have to have here is that we're putting ourselves under the training, not over the training. We submit ourselves to the training, 
with the conviction that the Buddha knew what he was talking about. And we're here to learn. Now, if over time you've developed all the qualities the Buddha talks about and you've reached all the attainments he talks about, and you still feel there's something lacking, well, then you're in a position to judge. I remember going to see a John Fu, and there were a lot of things about me that really surprised him, that in the culture that I was raised, certain things that he took for granted that all human beings would know. I didn't know. And they're basic things. And I could have overlooked them, and I could have said, well, it's just minor stuff here in Thai, in Thai culture. But I had the conviction that he knew what he was talking about. And there were some things that were severely lacking in my education. And so when you take that attitude, you're going to learn. One of the enemies of the Dharma is narcissism, the belief that you're already good or that your opinions are special. And even the Buddha does say you have to learn how to judge things for yourself. You're going to see things for yourself. Everything has to be tested. The question is, are you trained well enough to be a fair judge? So you give things a try. You give the Buddha the benefit of the doubt. They even on the little things there. Are people used to complain about the Buddha, even during the Buddha's lifetime, that he was being way overly scrupulous in all the little tiny rules that he was making. And I must admit, when I first read the rules, I was a little taken aback by all the things that had to be memorized, all the things that had to be watched out for. But as I lived by the rules, I began to see that in cases where there was strife within the monastery, this is particularly after John Fu and passed away, it was because one of the monks was not holding by the rules and it stirred things up. And you notice, it's, it's the little things that drive people crazy about other people. You can drive through stop signs and it doesn't bother your friends, but if you pick your nose at a meal, it will. There's nothing against the law about picking your nose, but it drives people crazy. And there are a lot of other little things in the rules, are that kind of thing. So as the Buddha said, the rules are there. One for harmony within the group, too, so we'll inspire faith, so people want to come and learn. And then three, it's for our own defilements, so to get rid of, as he said, the effluence within the heart. Now the word effluence, the three big ones, sensuality, becoming, ignorance, those are done away with only with our own ship. Sensuality with non-returning. but becoming an ignorance, arahantship. Now those are high levels of attainment, which means that the rules are not a little thing. Even something as basic as contemplation of the food, as the Buddha said, if you really comprehend physical food, to comprehend sensuality, the five strings of sensuality and why you're attracted to them, that's a high level of attainment. So be willing to submit to the training. Don't think you're above it. I've been seeing recently some examples of senior monks who have decided that they're above the training. And whatever opportunity they may have had for awakening, it's been spoiled. So try to focus on what you need to do in order to respect the training, what the tra training requires of you and be willing to learn the lessons that it's, willing, that it's going to teach you. Many times there are lessons you don't like to learn or lessons you didn't expect you had to learn, but they're there. And the fact that they're unexpected means that they can open new vistas that you hadn't even imagined before.